it's a pleasure for us to have the second lesson by Professor Maiani. Yes. So please, you can start to share the screen. Here it is. Very good. Thank. Okay. So good to see you again. And um, I am here is the list of the arguments that I'm going to discuss in this first hour. We are at lecture three light and heavy tetraquarks, and first of all, comparison with other molecules. So let me go in my... Yeah, now, that, that's the origin of the idea of a tetraquark. It, it started in the 70s, when people started accumulating data on the light scalar measures. Uh, the situation has remained unclear for a long time because it was not clear whether there was a light uh, sigma meson uh, to pi, pi pi resonance and uh, a, a, a strange meson which uh, was given the name kappa and these particles came and went out uh, in experiments it was uh, they are wide there are uh, wide resonances and uh, difficult to, to pin down. But uh, at some time, uh, around the 70s, it was clear that uh, the, the was, there were these resonances. And, uh, and uh, Jaffe compared that to the, to the normal QQ bar nonet that, uh, that you have seen. Uh, in the vector mesons, for instance. In these cases, you would expect the isospin equal one state to be the lightest because it's made of a light quark and anti-quark. And here in the, in the scalar mesons, instead, the I equal one state, which was discovered relatively late, the A0980 is on top of the, uh, of the mass uh, scale and uh, um, so so while one expects a scalar state uh, qq bar uh, these these bezels are not uh, don't have the then they don't look like and jaffe observed that if you instead bind a diquark into an anti diquark then of course, uh, you could uh, make this uh, to work because uh, um, to make an isos, for, uh, for instance, and the, the idea was to have uh, diquarks which were anti-symmetric in uh, color, uh, anti-symmetric in, in flavor, as you, as you three, and the spin, spin zero. The anti-symmetry in flavor implied that uh, to make an isospin equal one with a tetraquark, you have to have an SS bar pair, as is indicated by the diagram on the uh, left hand side, which, uh, which shows that with a, such anti symmetric um, uh, uh, diquarks, you can make an octet, uh, a nonet, in fact. And uh, this nonet has a, a spectrum which is totally reversed with respect to the expectation of QQ bar. In fact, uh, as I said, the isospin equal one states uh, have a, a, an SS bar pair in one in the dark work and in the anti dark work, so they are, are the heaviest, while the lightest state is uh, as only non-strange non quarks, and so it's the lightest. And uh, he, he proposed that, and uh, he made a, a philosophy about that by, by distinguishing what, what Jaffe called the good diquarks and the bad diquarks. The good diquarks are in the present terminology, which includes also color, are uh, antisymmetric in color, antisymmetric in flavor, and antisymmetric in spin. So they have they have zero all the quantum numbers and uh, the bad, the bad diquarks instead have uh, always color three bar, but uh, they, they are symmetric in flavor and symmetric in spin. And he assumed that 
the, the bad dye quarks would not bind, would not form hadrons, and that would explain why we do not see, for instance, resonances with isospin equal to. We only see resonances belonging to uh, uh, to non-net of SU3, so no, no isospin equal to. And um, the, if applied to the scalar meson, this had a limited, uh, limited uh, uh, scope, but uh, um, what happened that when the exotic uh, uh, states were discovered, in particular the X3872, we tried to apply the same idea and describe it as a diquark, anti diquark uh, bound states. I will come to that later. But um, let us uh, see the difference between, uh, between uh, normal, me normal mesons and uh, tetra quarks. To form hadrons, if you have a good or a bad diquark, you need to combine with another colored object because you have to make a colored singlet. And the simplest thing is to combine with another quark and make a baryon. In fact, the idea that baryon could be analyzed as a diquark quark pair uh, well, has been used and recurring in the, in the literature and has been used in many, many instances. But um, to make a meson, you have to bind the diquark with the anti diquark, with a, a sort of H shaped. Um, um, string of uh, the color string uh, uh, system. And uh, this was uh, uh, studied first by Rossi and Veneziano. And uh, Veneziano uh, tried to understand the uh, low energy resonances in terms of uh, tetra quarks of the, this kind. And uh, you expect many states, contrary to, to the nuclei, in which uh, you have only the fundamental state and very few uh, uh, resonances because uh, the strings that join the quarks may have radial and orbital excitation. And uh, as Veneziano observed uh, in several instances, this topology is more related to baryon and baryon. Uh, and um, we, uh, we could suppose that uh, a, 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 an object like that would uh, decay more easily into baryon and baryon of course if phase space allows and uh, these are the various possibilities now you can compare that with the, the idea of a hadron molecule which which as i said was introduced by the rucola georgia and glashov and by other authors in this case you have uh, two color singlets but joined by the exchange of uh, uh, colorless object like pions, two pions, three pions, whatever. Okay, and uh, in the in this case, uh, the topology is very different. The two things are not bound by string color strings that tend to confine this object, but they are bound by things that strings that can be broken without uh, creating new pairs and. Uh, you expect very few states, no orbital or radial excitations. I think this is a very important thing to, to remember. Of course, the nuclei are hadron molecules. They are made by colored singlet protons and neutron, it is a good approximation, and uh, bound by the exchange of uh, pions and uh, similar. And uh, so, uh, as, as, as I said uh, yesterday, uh, you would expect that uh, a, an object like that is not really produced in a very high uh, PPERP environment, but is rather a low energy object, something that happens when the two hadrons are very close in phase space and they feel the relative attraction due to uh, one pion exchange. And uh, this is, a, is another element that we have to, to keep in mind. And I showed you. Um, yesterday, the, the, the production at large PPERP of the X3872. Now, let's go uh, closer now to the, to the picture for the exotic hadrons that uh, we introduced uh, long ago with, uh, with the Piccinini, Polosa, and Veronica Riquel. And uh, the idea is that of uh, Jaffe, 
to have a dye quark, which has a heavy quark inside, a charm, and the anti-dye quark, which have a heavy anti-quark, uh, uh, anti-charm, and uh, uh, this bounds by uh, QCD forces. But uh, we thought that uh, since uh, the charm quark reduces the, the mass of the charm quark reduces the, the interaction, the spin-spin interaction, we allow it to full good and bad dye quarks to be bound uh, at the same point. And uh, so you have a, 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 a wealth of states for a system like that. Uh, first of all, they have uh, isospin equal one and, and zero because the, the quark pair, assuming the, the light quarks be up and down only, uh, heavy light bad quarks admitted, and the neutral states may be a mixture of isotriplet and isosinglet. And uh, similarly to the constituent quark model, we may assume that uh, the Hamiltonian of such an object is done by two parts. One is the mass part, the two twice the mass of the dye quark, and then the spin-spin interaction among all the particles inside this energy. And uh, if you, if you um, put yourself in the basis where you diagonalize the total angular momentum, since uh, you have uh, zero and one spin for one dye quark and zero and one spin in the anti dye quark, you have this complex of, of states. You have, uh, you have um, uh, states with uh, spin zero. And you have two kinds of states like that, uh, the two spin equal to zero or the two spin equal to one combined to give J equal zero, or you may have um, uh, one spin equal zero and, and the other spin equal one, and you have two states, and the two states I call them X1 and Z, and uh, they are different by charge conjugation because uh, if you apply charge conjugation, the dye quark is transformed in the anti dye quark. And so the role of the two things exchange, and you may have a plus or a minus uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, opposite charge conjugation. And you have a, a third state of one plus, which is made by two spin one combined to give spin one. And uh, that has a obviously negative charge conjugation because. Uh, the combination of two spin one to give spin one is anti-symmetric. And then you have a fully symmetric thing, which has uh, the two spin equal one combined into J equal two, and that is a, is a, a two plus. So you have a, a, a whole fix, fixing the flavor that we will discuss tomorrow, fixing the nature of Q and Q prime and, and Q prime, uh, you have uh, this complex of states. You have uh, four uh, spin states. And uh, uh, now, in, in general, those that are um, uh, in, the, in, the green, uh, in the green circle, uh, th there is one which is uh, alone, is a um, charge conjugation plus combination X1. And then there is another, and there are two, which have neutral uh, negative charge conjugation, and they can be mixed in uh, two combination uh, in order to diagonalize the, the Hamiltonian, which is upstairs, the spin-spin the Hamiltonian. And so you may say that uh, uh, if you know this, the spin-spin matrix, the, the Kij, uh, you can diagonalize that and obtain uh, which are the physical values the physical states for Z and for Z prime, of which uh, I gave you only one specification in terms of quark spin, dye quark spin. Um, now, as I showed you yesterday, we can derive uh, a, a whole battery of, uh, of spin-spin interaction between quarks quarks and anti-quarks from the spectrum of the mesons and baryon. And the first idea that we had was to uh, use exactly that table that I showed you yesterday to, to compose the Hamiltonian of the, of the thing. And uh, 
that leads to a, a small disaster, as I will show you. And uh, uh, we made a reason for that. The reason is that you cannot really take the spin-spin couplings from mesons and baryons and apply them to this uh, tetraquark system because, as I showed you, as I told you yesterday, the the spin-spin interaction is proportional to the overlap probability of the two particles, the two components that are you are considering, and. Uh, there is no, no reason why this overlap probability should be in the tetraquarks the same as in the diquarks, as in the, the meson and variants. And uh, um, to get a better insight, uh, you have to imagine uh, bringing together in the, in the, in the expression of, of your tetraquark, bringing together the flavor, anti-flavor of the same uh, symmetry, of the same flavor, quarks and anti-quarks of the same flavor, and uh, in order to compare with what happens in, in mesons. And uh, this uh, is done by a transformation, which is uh, the analog of the Firth transformation, in which you change the order of two fermion fields, which is widely used in the theory of beta decay. And, uh, and uh, we did it uh, with using all the matrices, et cetera, et cetera. But I can give you a short end, very simple, that will show you how wrong you are to use the same spin-spin um, interaction of the mesons and baryons in the tetraquark. And uh, the, 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 the use of that is charge conjugation. Charge, conju charge conjugation is obviously symmetry of this system. And suppose I want to bring uh, uh, together Q, Q bar, Q bar, Q prime. And uh, now this forms a system in S wave, particle, antiparticle. And you know that uh, such a system uh, has a charge conjugation, which is, uh, which is a plus if uh, Q bar and Q prime are spin one and minus if uh, uh, Q bar and Q prime are spin zero. And uh, um, sorry, I think it's the other way around. It's a minus and minus, uh, minus for spin one and, uh, and plus for spin zero. This is pi on, pi on is Q, Q bar and spin zero and rho is Q, Q bar and spin one. Now, if the two spins are equal, for the, for the uh, Q bar, Q prime, and C bar C, then you have a state with charge conjugation plus, and uh, this has a spin-spin interaction of Q, Q bar plus one half. This is, this one half is, uh, is the eigenvalue of uh, sigma dot sigma for the light quarks. But if the spin of the light quarks and the spin of the heavy quark system is uh, different, then, of course, the charge conjugation is minus because you have a one minus and one plus. And you have two states of charge conjugation minus, which are one zero and zero one. And the, the first has the same spin spin interaction of the, 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 of the charge conjugation plus and uh, as an eigenvalue plus one half. And the second instead has. Uh, if I look to the spin spin interaction of Q bar prime, Q bar, Q bar prime as a negative value. So, on the basis of this, you would conclude that the charge plus one X, the X that the is degenerate to one combination of the, the other, the charge, negative charge conjugation. But the one that is not uh, degenerate is lighter. You see that uh, the, the one that has a, the large eigenvalue for spin spin interaction is the first, Q bar Q prime one and CC bar zero. And the, the other one is a negative eigenvalue. So you would expect to have X degenerate with one of the negative charge conjugation and the remaining one to be lower. However, when you see what are the tetraquarks with charge conjugation negative that I showed you have been discovered by best three in the, in the, in the 
2013, you see that there is one which is very close to the mass of the of the X, the 3900, but the other one is heavier. <laughs> so, so to assume that QQ bar interaction dominates as it happens for baryons and mesons in 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 light in in normal hadrons brings you to the wrong spectrum, and uh, we we fall on this this uh, um, problem for some time, but we found a very clever solution that is shown in the, the thing. Uh, the clever solution is to say that contrary to what happens in baryons and mesons, the dominant spin-spin interaction of the tetraquarks are those inside the diquark and inside the anti-diquark. In other words, there is no, oh, you can neglect the spin-spin interaction between one quark in one diquark and the anti-quark in the anti-diquark. But you have only the dominant spin-spin uh, interaction between the diquark and between the anti-diquark. Why this is, uh, is, uh, is uh, a good solution? Well, you see from here, because in this case, the, the dominant uh, in interaction spin spin is between the, the light quark and the charm in the day quark and the light anti quark and the, and the anti charm in the anti day quark so essentially the the interaction counts the spin one which are in the day quark and the anti day quark and you have in the charge conjugation plus x1 you have only one unit of spin one you have one unit of spin one in the Z3900, but you have two units of spin one in Z prime. <laughs> and so Z prime is heavier than Z and X. So you have a, a, a clever solution that reproduces the order of the, 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 of, of the, the Z, which is not degenerate to the X. You have a, one z has to be the general to the x, but the other one has to be the one one. So it has the highest spin spin interaction between the day quark and the anti day quark. And uh, you can uh, um, you can make a, a reason, a, a physical reason for that. A simple explanation of that would be that day quark and anti day quarks are at relatively large distance in the hadron. They are separated. They are not intermixed uh, one with each other. They are separated as to suppress the overlap probability of constituents in different diquarks, unlike what happens, for instance, in the usual, in the baryons, in which the, 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 di the quarks inside the diquark are intertwined with the, uh, with the extra uh, quark, and they, are all, they uh, all have the same overlap probability. It, it is a very simple solution to this ordering of the spectrum, which, uh, uh, which uh, as a, uh, we will see tomorrow, uh, can be worked out. And uh, you can find uh, if this, uh, this is supported by uh, the internal structure of the tetra uh, Now, uh, Now I can present you a spectrum of this uh, simple multiplet. You have, uh, as I said, uh, uh, at the center, you have the, the, the positive charge conjugation X3872, which is essentially degenerate with the Z3900. Uh, X3872 is one plus plus, and the Z3900 is one plus minus. With the same one plus minus, you have another tetraquark, which is higher. And uh, there is a, a, a separation. The separation between these two is just the effect of the spin-spin interaction between uh, uh, Q and, and charm. And uh, you can fit uh, this difference uh, and this complex by a, 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 a degenerate mass, which turns out to be about uh, 1900, about, about uh, 200 MeV and uh, a, a, a KCQ 
of the tetra quark, which is about 67 MeV, which is a very large value considering the fact that the charm is a rather heavy particle. Then you have uh, the zero zero uh, multiplet, which is uh, the zero zero particle, which is uh, one unit of spin down. So it is uh, one, there is one, uh, one unit of this uh, 67, two times uh, 67. And then you have uh, the two uh, other positive charge conjugation of uh, spin zero and spin two uh, degenerate in this approximation with uh, 4020, so around 4020. Mm, we, uh, in fact, uh, there is an exotic state which decays into pi plus chi C1, that is uh, as, a, as, a, as a charge conjugation plus at 4050, which uh, would be would go well with this uh, with this uh, uh, with this assignment. Note that the difference between thirty eight seventy two and thirty nine hundred is about twenty MeV. So we have to consider twenty MeV as a, as a something as an error of this very simple appro approximation. Um, this is the uh, the first uh, the the simplest simpler uh, tetra quarks that have been found. But uh, I told you that there is another one, the 4430, uh, which was found in fact uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in 2007, that uh, it, it can be considered as the radial excitation. We said at the time the radial excitation of the X, but the X has opposite charge conjugation. So the radial excitation of the 3900. And in fact, the difference in mass between 4430 and 3900 is 530, which is essentially equal to the difference between J psi and uh, the, the psi and the uh, psi 2s. And uh, then, of course, uh, if you assume that uh, the same spin spin interaction uh, operates in the first excited. Uh, um, orbital excitation states, then you would uh, expect a, a, a state with spin zero around 4250 or something like that. And uh, this is uh, the place where there is another, um, another um, um, uh, orbital excitation. Is there a question? Beraudo. Sorry, I, I missed the point, but now it's clear, sorry. Oh, okay. Can I go? Okay. So, so as you see, you can uh, in, in, put in a, in a, in a, in a scheme uh, a considerable number of particles. Um, uh, and a simple answer, reproduces the Z states ordering um, and it indicates that uh, the, the spin spin dominant spin spin interaction is inter diquark interaction. Constituents are not uniformly mixed in the back, but clamp into two separate entities. And uh, it, this is uh, what uh, one could call a diquarconium. In other words, is an object in which uh, the distance, the, the, the dimension of the diquark is smaller than the dimension of the of the total hadron. And uh, uh, I gave you yesterday a map of the first discovered exotic resonances. And uh, as you see, those uh, that are uh, lower go well into the into the, the these things, and uh, those that. Uh, uh, are the excited uh, the uh, orbital orbital um, excitation go well into that, and uh, of course uh, we would like to complete this multiplet, and I think that we need to know more about uh, uh, the spectrum of uh, these uh, these states. Now let me go to uh, something that came out after this uh, first consideration that, in, that uh, essentially worked on the X and the Z, 
and uh, and uh, it was the discovery of LHCb of a uh, of a set of resonances which decay into J psi phi. So they have uh, an internal structure which has two valence, a, a valence charm anti charm pair and the valence SS bar pair. And uh, our proposal was uh, that these had to be uh, tetra quartz with CS, C bar, S bar uh, composition. But now that's very interesting because of the one with the CS, C bar, S bar composition. Uh, has to be a partner in the same octet of uh, the X3872. Note that uh, if the resonances decaying to J psi phi have positive uh, charge conjugation like, like the X3872. And uh, so we try to, to organize uh, the four resonances that were uh, proposed by LHCB. And uh, you, uh, our uh, proposal was in, in the green things. The green things are uh, those that are uh, proposed by, by LHCB, uh, one at 4140 and then 4500 and 4700, spin zero. And uh, you can accommodate them into a fundamental mm, tetra quark, which is, uh, lies in the same non-at as the X, 3872, but th these two, the 4700 and 4500, have masses such that they would fit well into the orbital excitation. And in fact, if you try to fit these particles with the same formula that I gave before, you find that uh, um, the, the delta M, uh, that is the difference between the diquark mass, the diquark, which has a strange quark, and the dye quark, which has a, a, a light quark, is 130 MeV, which is a typical, uh, typical mass difference of uh, strange minus up. And uh, the, the kappa SC is about 50 MeV, and the radial excitation is 460 MeV, which is not so different from 530 MeV of the difference between the 4430 and, uh, and uh, those things. So uh, it is interesting, and I will come back on that tomorrow, that uh, the difference between the 4140 and 3872, which are the two ones that are in the, in the same position uh, as uh, tetra quarks, but uh, with different flavors, is uh, about uh, 270 MeV, and uh, it's very close to the mass difference between the phi 1020 and the rho 7070. So they really look like two components of a nonet, which has a, a light QQ bar uh, composition, and then uh, of course uh, weighted with the CC bar uh, uh, in the charm uh, particle. But there are also surprises in that, in not, only, in not only simple. Um, the point is that uh, um, LHCB noted that there is one peak which they analyze as a, a one plus plus, and that is the same uh, spin charge conjugation than the 4140. Now, in, 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 in these multiples, there cannot be two. Uh, of uh, uh, one plus plus and the 4274 is too, too close to the 4140 to be a radial excitation. And therefore, this is something that we do not understand. And we suggested to them to fit uh, the, the, the data with uh, two resonances, almost degenerate, which then would be the zero plus plus and the two plus plus, which are there. I, I, I don't know. Then I don't think there is an answer. It's clear that these data are still not so, not so, not so precise. And if you fit a, a bump with two resonances, you simply in, uh, increase the number of parameters, and there is no 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 real uh, advantage. The other point uh, that I want to point out is the presence of two negative 
uh, resonance, uh, uh, negative charge conjugation resonances, which are the analog of the Z and Z prime that we discussed before. And uh, now these are predicted uh, to be there at the mass uh, uh, that they have. We'll come back on that tomorrow, but uh, uh, they are negative charge conjugation. So they cannot appear in the spectrum J psi phi, which is plus charge conjugation, but they should be looked for into states like J psi eta or chi C eta or H C phi. And uh, these are the various possibility and um, for the moment, we are waiting for that. However, I want to, to, to convey the message that the resonances J psi phi can be naturally included into the scheme and they naturally accompany the, the, the hidden charm uh, non, non light, light quark anti quark uh, particle. There is, of course, a prediction, which was written in, in, uh, in one of my slides of uh, 2016. Where is the strange quark? Where is the strange tetra quark? It is a tetra quark, which is uh, uh, the composition CQ, C bar, S bar, or of course, CS, C bar, Q bar. And uh, uh, of course, this must be halfway between the 4140 and the 3872. And if you compute what it is, it turns out to be uh, uh, 40, 4010. And uh, last year, one of these kind of resonances was discovered at 4003, which is not so far from 4010. And uh, I'll discuss that tomorrow. Few remarks about the molecules to complete uh, my my uh, talk. Um, uh, this is uh, this is the the, the distribution of uh, pi pi j psi uh, observed around the uh, uh, thirty eight seventy two, and uh, it is still very mysterious. The present mass value is very close to the d zero d star zero mass, so. Uh, this is uh, certainly an indication that it, it could be a hadron molecule of the zero, d star zero. Uh, in fact, if X is a d zero, d star zero molecule, uh, uh, the, you, can, uh, you can see that the binding energy is very small and uh, um, it depends from the, from the resolution. At the moment, uh, uh, it can be as small as 80 kV or less than 170 kV. Now, if you apply the, the, the usual formula for, for the, the radius of uh, a, an object with such a binding energy, the radius is related to, to the square root of two reduced mass times the binding energy, and you find radius of the order of 10 Fermi which is really a very big one, and uh, uh, 15 protons radius. Now, can something like that be produced in high energy uh, collisions? And uh, this is the figure that uh, I showed you before. You can see that the, the X, that the cross section in proton proton, and this is a prompt cross section. In other words, the X, which is uh, reported here, are X that do not come from B decay, do not come from the decay of a B meson. They are produced promptly with a P perp of 15 GeV. Now, an object of 10 Fermi produced by P perp of 15 GeV, I think is a very, very unnatural thing. And uh, I would uh, um, not consider that. Um, of course, this should be valid for all the exotic uh, uh, states that are um, predicted in our scheme or considered in our scheme. One should see production of the Z3900, production of the Z4020, et cetera, et cetera. All that has not been done until now, 
presumably because a matter of resolution, but I think that that is a, is a, a line of investigation for, for experimental physics that uh, is very important. In other words, we have seen Charmonia produced promptly in high energy collision. We have seen X3872 produced promptly in high energy collision. Why don't we see the others or could we see the others? And of course, if you could see many of them, then it would be a real uh, indication that this is a, is a compact, uh, that these are compact object made of quarks and tetraquarks. Uh, th there is another possibility that has been claimed to explain such a large cross section of 3872, which, as you see, is totally incompatible with the nuclear, uh, uh, the, with the cross section with which. Uh, nuclei are produced, and it is that uh, this molecule could mix uh, with a compact object, a, a charmonium state, uh, uh, with the same quantum numbers, and therefore you could produce a lot of these molecules because you produce the, the charmonium component, and then you, you can, um, th that then will transform in a stationary state in the, in the X3872. This has been tried, and uh, the experimental data are fitted by a very, can be fitted with a large mixing angle, something like large mixing coefficient, something like 30% mixing of this X3872 with a charmonium state of the same quantum number. My point, however, and that is uh, at the moment is just uh, a, 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 a indication uh, is that I don't see very plausible a mixing of something in which the two CC bar are far apart 10 Fermi from each other to mix uh, into a system which has uh, the CC bar uh, at the distance of a fraction of a Fermi. That seems to me rather strange, but it cannot be excluded. And for the moment, so we have to simply ask our colleagues to make an effort to search for uh, these exotic states produced in prompt collision at high energy. And that would be a very, very important signature and difference between molecules and uh, tetraquarks. I finished. I think we have still some time for, for questions, if you have questions, and uh, um, and then we will go next year to the next, next hour, sorry, to the to the next lecture. So please, any question? Adriana. Adriana. Hello. Adriana. At the, the very beginning, you have said that uh, um, in nuclei there are molecules of hadrons. Uh, how can we be sure that uh, uh, no exotic hadron is present uh, in ordinary nuclei? I didn't get your question. Sorry. Okay. How can we be sure that uh, in ordinary nuclei there are no uh, ex exotic hadrons like tetraquark and well um, in in the nuclei we know that uh, sometimes there are bound uh, strange particles strange baryons for instance uh, hypernuclei with one lambda baryon substituting a neutron it's possible, I mean, because uh, uh, lambda baryon is sensitive to the nuclear forces because it has inside the up and down quark like the, the proton and neutron. So we know that uh, that uh, uh, the, the, the nuclear forces exist, so they can bind, for instance, in, in a tritium, uh, you can substitute uh, a neutron with a lambda. Of course, then lambda will decay. I mean, that, that's another story, but uh, on the scale of the strong interaction, 
you can have uh, hypernuclei. They're called hypernuclei. That is the nuclei in which, uh, instead of a baryon, you have uh, another uh, a strange baryon, for instance. So we know that hadrons can be bound by nuclear forces. This we know. But uh, the point is whether this particular hadron, say the X3872, which decays into BD star, etc., is in, can in fact be described in a, in a meaningful way as a bound state of a D and D star. And uh, that, uh, as I say, as I had in the in the beginning, the different there is a, a difference. Sorry, there is a, a very important difference which I try to 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 indicate here. Uh, that is, uh, I have to trying to indicate here that is uh, that uh, here. The, the quarks are bound by strings, color string, by QCD strings, okay? While in a molecule, you have two colored singlets object, proton and neutron or DD star, that are uh, bound by the exchange of also colored singlets like pions. And uh, dynamically, this is very different. And uh, in other words, uh, you, in the first case, you, are assuming that quarks can bound in more complicated by QCD forces by more in more complicated configuration than simply mesons and baryons. In the other one, you are you are saying no, uh, quarks can be bound only in mesons and baryons. But of course, mesons and baryons can bind by the the, the exchange of uh, colored singlets. To a more complicated configuration, it, it are two different, two different things, and we would like to know whether the the, the tetraquark approximation is better or, or worse than the molecule uh, other molecule approximation. In both cases, you have states made by four quarks, but the four quarks are arranged in a completely different way, and that makes a, a lot of difference. And uh, we are trying to sort out, <laughs> we are fighting a, 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 a among each other to, to sort out what is the better approximation. Is, it, is that clear? Okay. Any other question? Yes, maybe I have a question if I can ask. Please. Um, you mentioned at a certain point that uh, in this uh, dichroic picture, the spin-spin interaction occurs uh, inside uh, the single dichroic and not uh, involving quarks of different dichroics. So this means uh, that these dichroics in any case are quite far apart, in, even if maybe more well, compact. Far apart. Uh, we will see, we, we will consider that uh, in, in a, tomorrow. So ah, okay, so I will like, not anticipate. No, no, my question was how much do, uh, are they far apart? Okay, but maybe you will discuss too. I will, I will show that. I will discuss that. Any other question? If not, please, you can continue. Well, um, do you want uh, a small interruption between one lecture and the other, or shall I go? directly to the other one. Let me, first of all. Okay, I maybe if- uh, Find the slides, let me find the slides first. Okay. I will now, um, okay. So lecture four. Now, let's see. Now, um, so maybe it is better, it's better to have the, the break just before you start the new the new lecture. So let's say five minutes. I have, a, I have a something which is essentially the continuation of the art. So if you want, I ah, can, okay. So you can, can show you a couple of slides 
which continues the discussion we had about molecules. And uh, let me let me uh, do only that two transparencies, and then we make a break. Okay. okay? okay. So, uh, and uh, this is a, a something some consideration about QCD. I, I said that we believe that the fundamental theory of uh, strong interaction is QCD, and QCD is a very simple theory, at, at least uh, from the base point of view of the Lagrangian, you, I think you, you all know, it's like uh, quantum electrodynamics. You have a term G mu nu, G mu nu, which is analog of the term F mu nu, F mu nu in, 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 uh, in electrodynamics. Then we have the Dirac equation for the quarks and uh, with the covariant derivative D, which contains uh, uh, interaction with the gluon field. And then we have a mass term for the quarks. And, uh, I will consider only the light quarks. The heavy quarks are there, but uh, let's consider the, 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 the light quarks. And the heavy quarks, the mass term of the heavy quarks is a singlet under SU3 flavor. It, it, it does not, they don't carry uh, the flavor of, of uh, SU3. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I can rewrite that. The light quark mass term can be rewritten by separating a term which contain uh, u bar u minus d bar d, is a, is a isospin violating term, and the term separating the strange quark from the light non-strange quark, which is called lambda eight, because uh, it's represented by the Gelman matrix lambda eight. So we can write uh, LQCD, LQCD, in uh, as a sum of three parts, an L0, which is totally symmetric under SU3, that is a unitary transformation of the light quark U, D, and S, and they contain uh, uh, evidently the, the, the G mu nu, G mu nu, contains the Q bar, the covariant derivative Q, which are all colors, uh, flavored single, and contain the term which I called and uh, uh, which I called L0, L -M -L -M bar, which also is uh, symmetric because it contains the, the, the mass of the, the sum of the mass of the quarks. And then on top of lambda Z, L0 QCD, I have a term L3, which violates isospin. And for the moment, I will neglect it because I know that isospin uh, violations are very small, and lambda 8, L8, which violates instead SU3. And this, I know, is, a, is an important part. This is what we know about QCD. Now, the, what the, an hypothesis uh, done in the Eightfold Way is that L3 and L8 are color singlets, of course, but can be treated as perturbations that split the spec, the degenerate SU3 multiplets created by L0 QCD. In other words, you are making a very important dynamical assumption that there are no singularities when, L, for instance, you put L8 to zero. It is like, like when you imagine an atom inside a magnetic field. Okay? The magnetic field is a perturbation that breaks rotational symmetry. And, and so distinguishes between the states of different spin of the atom, the different J3 of the atom, but uh, it, it can be treated in perturbation theory. I can uh, switch off the magnetic field. I can do it as small as I can. So um, L L8 can be treated as a first order perturbation. This is the, the, the Gelman, Gelman uh, Okubo hypothesis that you can treat the perturbation of, of SU3 in as a small perturbation over the spectrum, the general spectrum of SU3, flavor SU3 multiplets. The color is not there and everything is color single. We, I'm not speaking of color. SU3 now is the SU3 of the eightfold way of the Gelman and Neyman. If this is true, then this L8 has a universal constant in it, which is uh, ms minus mq, 
and that is it. It must be the same for everybody, for all, all multiples, all particles, meson, variants, etc. They, it must be the same. And uh, in fact, uh, if you remember uh, last uh, yesterday, when I showed you the table of the mass of the constituent quark, I showed you that uh, there are differences between the mass of the constituent quark in a, in a meson and mass in a baryon. But when you make the difference, ms minus mq baryon is very close to ms minus mq meson. So there is a, a universality. And this universality applies to all SU3 multiplets. So the, the, the upshot of this very short discussion is that no matter what is your quark configuration, if it is created by QCD forces, uh, the, the particles, the bound states of this configuration must fall into SU3 flavor multiplets, and they have to show the same scale of violation of SU3 flavor. These nuclei are not like that. <laughs> and, and, and for that, hadron nuclei, uh, hadron molecules are not like that. They are not like that because the forces that uh, binds proton and neutrons or the star and D into a hadron molecules are crucially dependent and non-analytically dependent on the mass of the pion, that is on M ms minus m q. And this is the great difference. And uh, the, the, the forces exchanges between color singlets nuclei are strongly dependent from the mass of the exchanged particle, pi, rho, eta, etc. And so they are strongly flavor dependent, not uh, dependent as a small perturbation over an unperturbed spectrum. Bound states correspondingly are not expected to form multiplets with a regular pattern of mass differences. There are no SU3 multiplets for nuclei. <laughs> that is very well known. And this is the reason why. And uh, so it, it, now, of course, uh, that means that uh, uh, there is a great difference between uh, uh, states in which uh, you can, ex uh, if you try to bind the uh, color singlet, uh, color singlet state between you can have a pion exchange or not, you cannot have pion exchange. And, uh, and, and the QCD does not allow that. This is what I want to say. And, uh, um, uh, and there are, however, uh, many papers in which uh, people try to introduce singlet, SU3 singlet forces between uh, color singlets and uh, uh, to try to uh, explain the spectrum, etc. This is, I think, just a way to mimic color forces. And uh, because uh, uh, um, if you have uh, color singlet hadrons, and it's clear that they have attraction, they exchange forces, but these are not color singlets. They are not flavor singlets. And this, so in, in a way, we will see that uh, with the exotic hadrons that have been discovered in the, in the, in the last years, uh, they cannot uh, admit a picture like that. I would stop here and um, then we can uh, continue a few, if we can stop. Uh, Five minutes just okay to... then we continue because uh, this is very interesting thank you very much okay okay so this was an introduction and, uh, and in fact uh, uh, exotic mesons has been found that uh, that they call the new wave starting from 2016 we have seen that uh, J psi phi resonances have been found, which cannot be described by as molecules uh, due to pion exchange. And then D J psi resonances have been discovered, which I will discuss at the, in the second part of this talk. And then later, just uh, last, last year, 
open strangeness exotics ZCS 3082 by, by mm, the best three and ZCS 4003 by LHCB. Uh, no by pion exchange forces could bind them as other molecules made by color signal mesons. Molecular models have to stand on the existence of phenomenological forces with un undetermined parameters, which have not very much to do with nuclear forces. On the other hand, the new exotics arrive very naturally as uh, the quark anti di quark states bound in coral singlets. And uh, the compact tetra quark model makes a very firm prediction, as I showed you. Hidden charm tetra quarks must form complete multiples of flavor SU3, with mass differences determined by the quark mass difference MS minus MU, which we know. And the, as I showed you in a moment, the ZCS 3082 and the ZCS 4003 can almost fill two tetra quark donors with the expected mass scale differences. Uh, this is uh, 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 the diagrams that show the, the existence of these particles. Best three, E plus E minus going to K plus Z minus CS, 3985. And, uh, and uh, LHCB in the decay of a B meson into Psi K plus Phi, discovered that there are uh, Psi K plus resonances, which they call ZCS4003. These are the now, let me recall that a classical SU3 nonet we have seen is described by this uh, uh, figure, which is uh, the SU3 uh, representation of the SU3 octet. Uh, that is, uh, is well known. But we can uh, represent this in another way by, as, uh, by looking since the in SU3, SU, the strange quark is a diagonal, essentially. It's an omega phi mixing. It tells you that it's diagonal in the number of strange quarks. And so you can describe that also in this way as a pyramid in which you put the, the, the lowest, the, the non-strange uh, uh, quark states uh, at the lowest, and then you have K, K states and phi states. And uh, we have seen that uh, in the vector mesons, where uh, S is uh, the strange quark is diagonal, uh, there is a rule which is the equal spacing rule that says that uh, rho K star mass difference is the same as K star phi mass difference. And so uh, if you have a non -ed, you can always identify the, um, the zero strangeness level, the one strangeness level, and the two strangeness uh, level, SS bar. Now, um, as, I, as I said, uh, uh, X3872 and X4140 are two resonances which have the same charge conjugation and uh, one is described by a tetra quark with the nu u bar or cc bar and the other one is a cc bar ss bar so they are the two extreme of the same nonets and uh, therefore they must uh, be equally spaced uh, with uh, a strange partner which has to sit in between uh, now uh, of course, you have found two ZCS, one the one of best three and the other one of LHCB, and these are not the same particle. So you have two solutions. And I, I tell you, the first solution, which is uh, more preferred in a way, as uh, the 4003, the LHCB ZCS inside the X3872, and it fits very well with the 4140 because, as I as I told you, the the halfway in mass between 
4140 and the pH 72 has a mass of 4009, and 4009 is very close to 4003. So that's a very almost perfect solution. Uh, that, that solution uh, uh, means that you have to associate ZCS 3982 to the um, 3900. And at this point, if you apply the equal spacing rule, you can say that uh, there must be an X SS bar that is a resonance with the hidden charm and hidden strangeness at the mass 4076. This would be a negative uh, charge conjugation resonance. So I will uh, tell you later uh, what it means. And, uh, and this is the first solution. The other solution is uh, when you exchange the, the two and you say that the, 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 the best 3982 has to go with the X3872, you see that uh, you would predict uh, 4009. Now, 3982 is uh, not so far from 4009, but it's 20 MeV or something like that. Okay, so, so it's. Uh, 30, 30 MeV or so. So it's, it's still tolerable, although it's a worse quality. And uh, 4003 would go uh, not badly with the 3900. And uh, so you would predict the SS bar uh, state missing at 4121. So these are, are two possibilities. And uh, I, I, I would say I would prefer the first solution, but I cannot exclude the other the second solution. And, uh, and um, this is it. Um, as I said, now you have to find that this X SS bar, which can be either around 4076 or about 4121, according to the two solution, this should decay not in J psi phi, but rather eta C phi. It's not so easy to, to find out. Or D star S, D bar S. And that uh, can, be, can, be, can be searched for. Uh, but then, of course, you have to go back on, uh, on your nonet. And uh, each nonet has uh, uh, downstairs an isotriplet and two, I, an isotriplet and an isosinglet. So you have two neutral states, omega, omega and rho, omega and rho zero in the, in the case of normal matter. So you have to find the partners of 3872, uh, which have not been found until now. And I will discuss that tomorrow. And you have also to find the partner of uh, isospin zero of uh, the 3900. This is a, this would be a particle. It, so you have to, to find out the I equal one partner of 3872 is a particle that would decay to J psi rho plus minus. And that uh, can be difficult to be seen because uh, rho plus decays into a pi plus pi zero and the pi zero is uh, lost in the background. And, uh, and uh, the Z3900 is very interesting because it should decay into J psi sigma. And uh, you know that uh, the X3872 decays into J psi rho or J psi omega. <coughs> And this in, instead should decay with the pions of much lower uh, spectrum. Um, an indication of that has been claimed a uh, time ago by Compass, but uh, I don't know what happened next. And uh, I don't know. At the moment, there is no evidence for those, but uh, those are um, unavoidable uh, consequences of the picture that I have discussed. In a way, it's like the omega minus, we hope. So they have to be there. If, if they are not there, then there is something wrong in the whole picture and uh, we cannot uh, um, go further. Now, there is also a third nonet, which is associated to the 4020, which is a, a higher mass 
And uh, the nice thing is that L LHCB sees indeed another ZCS of 4220. They still they have some evidence for that. It's not not clear, but uh, they have some evidence for that, which is, uh, however, either one plus or one minus. If it is one plus, then it has exactly the right quantum numbers to be in the nonet of the Z4020, but it is perhaps a little bit too heavy because of, from 4020 to 4220, there are 200 MeV, which is a little bit too much, I would expect to have a mass difference in the order of 100, uh, 150, 170 MeV and not 200, 200 is a little bit too much. I have a bold uh, suggestion. Uh, we have uh, two nonets, same charge conjugation. They of course can be mixed with, with each other. And uh, if uh, ZCS is a bit too low, and uh, the uh, the other one is uh, the is the the forty to twelve is a bit too high. It could be that uh, the strange uh, components of these two nonets, when mixing, go of course one up and the other down, and uh, this would enhance the this this difference, and it is a possible solution. Now, uh, unfortunately, we don't know how to compute the mixing of these two, two things, but this is certainly a possibility. And uh, we will see uh, in the future what uh, happens. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, we consider two nonets of which uh, the non-strange member have opposite charge conjugation. And the point is, uh, what is this, what this as a consequence on the decays and on the production of this strange particle? Of course, in principle, you can say that strange particles are not the eigenstate of charge conjugation. We know that uh, uh, apply charge conjugation to K plus, you get K minus, you don't get back to, to K plus. But uh, if you have a symmetry which relate K minus with K plus, like SU3, in which these two particles are in the same octet, then you can have something like a charge conjugation for uh, also for uh, strange particles. Uh, of course, in the limit in which the symmetry SU3 is exact, uh, violated therefore by uh, what violates uh, SU3 symmetry. And uh, I, I, I gave a little insert we, we try to see if uh, we using SU3 symmetry and charge conjugation, we could uh, in, understand what was the particle that has to go with the X3872 and with the 3900. And I, I tell you simply that we don't find any reason to find the distinction between these two, but uh, it's an interesting exercise that I want to propose because uh, these are, are things that uh, were used at the time of Mason theory, but uh, uh, are not used anymore. And uh, so let me define, discuss a little bit charge conjugation in an octet of SU3 flavor. And uh, if you have a, a, an octet which is self-conjugate under charge conjugation, then of course you can define that as a transformation acting to the octet. And uh, you can see that uh, applying charge conjugation to the octet of scalar of pseudoscalar meson, you get simply the matrix, which is the transpose of the other one, because it, you have to, to change K plus with K minus, pi plus with pi minus, etc. And of course, you can uh, make then another transformation uh, of SU3, which tries to bring back this to the to the previous matrix. And in fact, um, what what is done in the in the theory of of uh, of uh, uh, SU3 is that if you try to couple three octets, uh, sorry, 
you have to you have to uh, you have to define charge conjugation as a a, a sign which tells you whether uh, from going from p to to the transpose the charge conjugation brings a minus sign or a plus sign in other words uh, c p c should be equal to the transpose multiplied by a sign and this sign is the sign of the charge conjugation of the neutral particles those that are on the diagonal and which are left unchanged by charge conjugation now how does it to do with the couplings well if you have three nones a b c with three diagonal charge conjugation eta a eta b eta c and uh, there are two different invariant couplings according to the sign of this uh, charge conjugation there is uh, uh, because uh, because uh, applying charge conjugation to the trace of ABC, which is the invariant that you can do constructing that, uh, it gives you the sign, eta A, eta B, eta C, and uh, gives you the, 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 the transpose and the trace of the, uh, the product of transpose is the trace of the transpose of, with the matrix in, 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 uh, in the reverse order. Now, of course, the transpose of the metric, the trace of the transpose is the, is the same as the one before. And so you see that applying charge conjugation to, the, to this coupling, trace ABC, you get a sign times trace ACB. And now, according to the sign that you get, you have to get a plus or a minus uh, for, for, for this uh, according to to, to whatever uh, it is. And so you have two invariants with definite charge conjugation. One contains the trace of A with the anti-commutator, and that's even under uh, charge conjugation. If all the A, B, C, the product is even, or you have to have the commutator in, in, in the other case. And then, therefore, in the limit of exact SU3, you can couple three nones uh, with the so-called F coupling, the commutator, or D coupling, the anti-commutator. And now you can, you can uh, uh, ask, uh, how, how can we produce from a photon, for instance, in, a, in best three, uh, e plus e minus goes to a photon and then the photon makes k plus and z minus and the the idea is to which nonet has to belong z minus uh, for uh, being produced by the photon and uh, of course the photon has to have negative charge conjugation so uh, if you have a, a if z belongs to a negative uh, to a negative um, charge conjugation nonet, you will have to combine this with the K nonet uh, with the commutator so that it compensates the sign of Q, which is uh, because K and Z would have opposite charge conjugation. And so you would have that. And that is a large coupling because, uh, because uh, if you compute that, you, you have the charge of the up quark minus the charge minus uh, minus the charge of the s quark and the minus the charge of s quark has the same sign as the charge of the up quark and so you get two thirds plus one third which is one instead if it is uh, k uh, if it is uh, z of a positive charge conjugation you will have to have sorry i think i got the opposite way uh, because uh, if these two have the same, this is the case where ZCS has negative charge conjugation, and this is the same, which has positive charge conjugation. And uh, then uh, uh, you, you, you see that there is a large difference into that. However, we don't know if this is produced by a photon or produced by 
a resonance which then goes into that a y state and uh, um, in that case there will be no difference so I, the, the upshot of this is that we cannot know at the moment whether the ZCS, which is produced by the best three, has the same charge conjugation of the nonet to which X belongs or the nonet to which Z be belongs. And we don't know that. But if we would uh, measure the energy dependence of the production uh, of that and see if this is come from a resonance or, or come from the continuum, then we would have some indication. I don't want to, to uh, insist on that. And then I, I simply want to say that at the moment, we don't know if we can distinguish between what is called the solution one and solution two by the experiments, the answer is at the moment we cannot. But in principle, by measuring the, the energy dependence of best three uh, cross section, we could do that. I would now go to the second part of my lecture and uh, discuss the DJ Psi resonances, which uh, have been uh, a very surprising um, result. Very surprising depends because uh, if you believe that the exotic states are tetraquarks and pentaquarks, then this is quite uh, natural and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very may have a profound uh, implications for the theory of exotic resonances the first question is can the j psi resonances be a molecule now a, a molecule if you if it is a molecule in the sense that it has to have nuclear forces acting between that the only possibility is that it's Xi CC baryon or Gutuchan quark and it's anti baryon Psi bar CC and that that could make a bound state which is bound by nuclear forces. But this, the mass of Psi C, two times the mass of Psi CC is a much higher than the mass of the first bump seen by LHCB. So I think this can can be excluded and uh, there are uh, attempts to describe the binding of a 2j psi with a, a singlet an su3 singlet uh, force which is a, a essentially mediated by a j psi you can have a, a vertex in which you exchange j psi from one j psi to the other but uh, that would have a range which is a, a fraction of a Fermi. So it will bring you in, in, the, in the realm of color forces. And therefore, I don't think it is consistent. You can do that. You can study things like that. But uh, I don't see any, any physical reason for, to, to do with that. So the most reasonable, uh, the most reasonable picture of uh, a J psi, J psi resonance is that it is done da, by two diquarks, one with two charm and the other one with two anti charm. In this case, you have identical quarks. So uh, since uh, if the if uh, if uh, if, if uh, the color is anti symmetric, uh, three 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 bar then of course they must have spin one so as to be symmetric in flavor symmetric in spin and anti-symmetric in color and therefore would be uh, uh, s equal one and c c bar c bar c bar also in s equal one so fermi statistics will select that and uh, this has uh, now uh, um, um, two kind of states uh, concerning the total j uh, zero plus plus and two plus plus with charge conjugation plus and c equal minus one uh, for uh, j equal one plus minus so the lower states are expected to be the zero plus plus and perhaps followed by the two plus plus which are the most symmetric uh, states you can do with the, with this uh, speed now 
how can you compute the spectrum of a thing like that? Well, the simplest thing is to use the what are called the Jacobi coordinates. You have four bolts, uh, and uh, you have to you have to have uh, a, a psi one, which is the distance of CC bar uh, of CC, uh, a psi two, which is the distance of C bar C bar, and then psi three, which is the distance between the center of mass of the two pairs. And so you have three three Jacobi coordinates. And uh, you can try uh, to put up a battery of wave functions and try to minimize the Hamiltonian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a, a work that, in particular, has been done by the, this author here, Bedola, Ferretti, Roberts, and Santo Pinto, and uh, it leads you to a spectrum which is not far from looking similar to the spectrum that LHCb sees. Uh, you, you have the, uh, the ground states, which have uh, the orbital number equal to one. Uh, and here you have the zero plus plus state. And, uh, and uh, um, then you have its uh, radial excitation. Uh, one, two are the radial excitation, and the other one are spin and, and uh, uh, total spin and total angular momentum. Then you have also. A, a, a bound state, a ground state for one plus plus, which is here below, and uh, and uh, um, and uh, they compute the the masses of the states. Uh, but uh, there is a delicate delicate point here because uh, uh, since this is uh, the the. The potential is like the charmonium potential that acts between these quarks, but uh, it is a it, 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 it is a confined potential. So you cannot uh, define the zero of uh, the potential when the particles are all far apart because particles never go far apart. And so, like in charmonium, you have one a priori unknown additive constant that we you will have to fix. Over the uh, the status of uh, um, the 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 one one mass mass, and then all the others are uh, given. In, in other words, what uh, what the upshot of this argument is that you have to give me, for instance, to tell me what is the mass of the two plus plus. Why I choose the two plus plus, I will explain in a moment. You have to give me the mass of the two plus plus. Say to say that this is the 6,900 peak, and then using this this uh, uh, table, I can give you the mass of all the others. And uh, in particular, if I say that uh, uh, the two plus plus is the 6,900 peak that sees uh, the, sees uh, LHCb in this table, I read. Uh, 6246 so I, I have to add a constant that brings the 6246 6046 to 6900 and then I, I will bring the zero plus plus to 6536 so as you see uh, if I say that uh, this peak uh, the the Prominent peak at 6900 is the two plus plus. The zero plus plus could be this little peak that you see a little bit below the two plus plus. Who knows? We don't know yet. We don't know the spin, the spin parity of this stage. But this is the sort of an argument. I mean, I think that the, the, these calculations can be refined and. Uh, in a way, in perspective, similar to what we have done for charmonium, we could end up to find a, a reliable spectrum for CC, C bar, C bar states. It's a very exciting thing. We try to understand the case and the branching fractions of these, of these, uh, these things. And uh, how, how can a decay uh, is something like uh, this, this particle? Take for instance the zero, zero plus plus, but the two plus plus you can do the same. You start with a diquark 
with the CC three bar and spin one. Uh, downstairs are the color and the upstairs is the spin. And uh, by fields rearranging, you can put together CNC bar uh, together, put CNC bar together, and you get a combination of, of, of these things. The first is a CC bar color singlet spin one, CC bar color singlet spin one, uh, or color singlet or, or color eight spin one, color eight spin one. This I call one and two. Then you have uh, the, again color singlet spin zero, color singlet spin zero, or color eight spin zero, or color eight spin zero. Now, how can these pairs annihilate to produce the final state? Well, you have a certain amplitude for the color singlets simply to annihilate, and the CC bar in color singlet has been one will annihilate into a state which is essentially a J psi. And uh, the color singlet spin zero will annihilate in essentially in, in, in eta C. And once this is done, the other pair will rearrange uh, by conserving, uh, conserving an angular momentum and charge conjugation, etc. So uh, one uh, upstairs will give essentially a pair of J psi and one downstairs will give a pair of eta C. But you have also the annihilation for the color octet. Annihilation for the color octet is uh, uh, quite delicate because a CC bar in color octet can give it a, a directly a gluon. And uh, this is illustrated in this diagram. You can annihilate uh, a color octet CC bar into a gluon and uh, at the same time, of course, the, the other CC bar provides you a pair of, of quark and the color gluon can produce a pair of quarks that will join the CC bar pair to produce a pair of meson. Of course, you can have uh, other additional uh, soft gluons which will so make so that the final state will not be essentially DD star. But, uh, but will be uh, DD bar or DD star, but essentially we will have many other pions, etc. But orientatively, you can say that this uh, diagram will give you the, 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 the rate for DD star. And uh, you can estimate the total width of this uh, thing by, uh, by, uh, by this mechanism, by the mechanism of the decay of the singlet into eta C and J psi and the decay of the octet into pair of mesons. And uh, this we have done in a paper, which uh, uh, unfortunately is not quoted here, is a paper by uh, Santo Pinto, myself, Becky, and the other two uh, Genoma guides. And, uh, and uh, we have uh, computed the branching ratios into all these channels, and in particular, the branching ratio into for muon when the two J psi decay into mu plus mu minus. Now here comes uh, the two plus. You can see from this table that uh, the, the, the rate uh, into four muon of the J, P, uh, the two plus plus is uh, essentially six times the rate uh, of uh, the zero plus plus. And also uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, Hadron collisions, the two plus is uh, produced five times more abundantly than the spin zero. And so you have a factor 30 of visibility of the two plus plus with, the, uh, with respect to the zero plus plus. So my, our guess would be that perhaps the big peak that is seen by, by, by uh, LHCB is uh, perhaps the two plus plus. But uh, of course, we cannot say anything until spin parity is, 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 uh, is uh, computed. I don't want to go more into detail of that, but uh, I will uh, uh, simply go now to the, uh, uh, to the conclusion. This is uh, uh, what I was saying. Uh, the, the, uh, we could imagine that uh, 
the big peak is the two plus plus and the zero plus plus is the small kink that is uh, below that. We can compute the total width, uh, which are reasonably in agreement with what is seen there. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the real point will be to, to uh, sorry, the real point will be to, to, to compute the speed parity of these states and start making quantitative estimates of the mass spec. I would uh, conclude now. We have uh, some time for the discussion. And uh, this lecture was done into two parts. The first part was uh, the SU3 flavor of uh, properties of the tetra quarks that we have uh, observed, the X and the Z, and the, the together with the psi uh, phi uh, resonances. And uh, my conclusion would be that the existence of exotic SU3 flavor multiplets with a scale of symmetry breaking determined by the quark mass differences is a very distinctive prediction of the compact tetraquark, a very clear indication in, in terms of that. And it is very interesting that uh, the Z, the, the strange, that the strange uh, uh, exotic particles that have been found uh, uh, last year uh, are fit very well into uh, two nonets with uh, with uh, X3872 and ZC3900. And perhaps there is another strange particle waiting for us to fill the nonet of the Z4020. Uh, Much remains to be done, but uh, it is clear that uh, we have to increase uh, the, the resolution the luminosity and the energy definition of the experiment because we are going to have to find complicated spectra and we need to have all the particles that are in, 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 in game to, to, have a, to have a concrete theory. In particular, for instance, the X SS bar, hidden charm and the hidden strangeness, but with opposite charge conjugation, is a, is a very important uh, element to add uh, and to study. Concerning the, the four charm tetra quarks, that's a really dramatic change. Uh, th there are many exciting possibilities for the 690, 900 uh, peak. We would uh, at this moment uh, prefer uh, a two plus plus classification. And of course, a direct speed parity determination is crucial and uh, pre presumably it can be done with more luminosity and the formula of states. More states are expected. Perhaps uh, zero plus plus peak could be a little below uh, the other one. Other peaks corresponding to radial and orbital excitation is a new world that opens up and uh, we think we have uh, enough uh, uh, theoretical tools to explore that. I would conclude with that and uh, look forward to uh, further discussion. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, uh, lecture. Any question? Well, is there something else we can discuss? Okay.
So if there are not uh, other questions, we can thank the speaker. I think that uh, <laughs> there are too many beautiful uh, results. I think <laughs> that you will receive the, the question tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. And they they will after they had time to to no to think about that. Very well. Thank you very okay. much. So bye thank bye. you very much and bye bye. So I close the session for all. See you tomorrow.